The gentleman from California is recognized. <clears throat> Director, we're about 100 days until the election. <clears throat> Russia has attacked our democracy in past elections. Are they seeking to do it in this one? Uh, we assess that the Russian government continues to want to influence uh, and in various ways interfere with our democracy, uh, with our electoral process. In fact, uh, just in the last few weeks, we announced a significant disruption of a uh, generative AI-enhanced uh, social media, you know, bot farm, essentially, uh, of the Russians uh, that was desi designed to be an influence operation, uh, and some of the fake fictitious profiles of, uh, of those bots purported to be U.S. persons. So they're still at it. Uh, we've seen that in election cycle after election cycle. Do the uh, Russians have a preferred candidate? Uh, I'm not sure that I could speak to that uh, here. But certainly what I would tell you is it's not just the Russians. Uh, and I think that's important for people to know, too. There's a lot of attention to the Russians, as there should be. Um, but we also know, uh, you may recall, that uh, in 2020, uh, Director Ratcliffe and I announced uh, an effort by the Iranians to try to interfere. And in, more recently, we've had indictments uh, related to China. 34 Chinese MPS officers creating fictitious personas, posting false information online, uh, full of narratives designed to sow divisiveness, discord, undermine us. And I'm talking about narratives that they were pushing, again, purporting to be Americans, but actually Chinese MPS officers, uh, for example, trashing any suggestion that COVID came from a lab leak, right. or uh, trashing uh, US law enforcement on the occasion of the anniversary of George Floyd's um, death. And shifting to the attempted assassination on the former president, I wanna make it clear, in America, violence has never been the answer, not on a certain day in January or a recent day in July. And I just want to go through the shooting just briefly with you. How many armed officers were within the perimeter, just ballpark figure? You know, that really goes to the security posture, which is the subject of the inspector, the DHS inspector general's review and the outside panel, independent panel that's Would been Would you say probably made. more than 100, though? I have to believe that number, but I don't, again, I don't have that number at my fingertips. Our focus is on the shooter and, and his attack. And the shooter was able to get eight shots off before he was killed? That's what it would appear, yes. Type of weapon, weapon used by the shooter was an assault rifle? Was an AR-style rifle. So that means one trigger pull, one round, is that right? Uh, essentially. Do you like to shoot? Do I? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Do you know the difference between an AR and a bolt-action rifle? I'm not going to try to sit here and engage on sort of firearms expertise, but um, but well, I've a, a fired action, a variety of weapons. But had the shooter used a bolt action rifle, would that have been one uh, one trigger pull, one round? That's my understanding. And, and there, would there had to have been more? Well, on an assault rifle, trigger pull round, trigger pull round, bolt action, non assault rifle. What's the difference? Is it faster, slower? He was able to get more rounds off more quickly than he would have with other kinds of weapons. And, and that's my point, is that we can add additional resources to protect political candidates, and we should. The people who went to that rally deserved to be protected from gun violence, just like the students at Parkland deserve to be protected from gun violence, just like the babies at Sandy Hook deserve to be protected from gun violence. So we'll devote, devote more resources. We've added a presidential candidate who is also now protected. But if we're being honest with ourselves, we have armed this country to the teeth. And we have allowed the most dangerous people to have access to the most dangerous weapons. And I say that as a parent of a seven-year-old and a five-year-old and a two-year-old, the two oldest who have done multiple mass shooter drills in their classrooms. I say that as a brother to two police officers who walk a very violent beat. And I say that as an elected official who believes that my colleagues deserve to be as safe as I deserve to be when we are at political rallies. And so we really need to step back and think, if we allow these weapons to be in our country, can we truly protect 
our elected officials, and can we truly protect, most importantly, our children and the next generation? I yield back. Gentleman yields back. It is